going to take us back in time now, 20 years nearly, to December 2001, to open this magazine. So it feels like the first time I'm opening it, because it's been a while since I looked at this. I have opened it when it was originally bought, but it's been sealed back, if you like, for the last, I don't know, say 10 years, maybe, maybe even more. I can't remember the last time I looked at it. And I remember picking this up at the news agents at the time, getting so excited that the PS2 was here finally and there's lots of buzz about this particular console it contained obviously a, a dvd player not a blu-ray player i nearly said a blu-ray player but a dvd player because it's 20 years ago and obviously all the advancements that it made from the ps1 it really was a lot of excitement around this so i just want to almost recreate that feeling and open up this magazine it came in this as you can see foil wrap that it has here and it contained a demo disc which was very much of the time as well from uh, the playstation era and we used to have obviously cassettes on the front covers that was part of getting a magazine back in the day as well very uh, much you wanted to pick up what was within the magazine or perhaps it was sellotaped to the magazine this was actually enclosed in this full wrap so just to show you the cover a little bit closer up here it's really nice still to have the foil wrap aspect to it because it feels like you're kind of say seeing it opening it for the first time and it was your complete guide to give you a bit of an intro into the console and very much this is the styling i've got a brand manual from somebody i knew worked for playstation and worked on the launch i need to find that and uh, the typography the style is very slick very early 2000s kind of late 90s i suppose this is 2001 but it had that rub off if you like and I worked in a graphic design studio myself so I very much appreciated the look of this love that ps2 styling so let's open it up this is the uh, so I say it's not completely sealed but uh, I've tried to keep it in a reasonable order over the years and you're probably familiar with this so I'm just opening it here it's exciting really I've done this for ages and there it is Going to put that to one side put that over there so yeah this was the um the issue i think it was the issue zero maybe uh, issue one sometimes they do issue zero and uh, you're pretty familiar with this uh cover if you're not there it is for the first time you've seen it and the disc itself some of the highlights you got there was international superstar soccer wild wild racing Tech and Tag, Gran Turismo 3, MotoGP, Dead or Alive 2, Ready to Rumble, and uh, all the EA Sports releases. I remember I bought a lot of those on release. You know, I always tried to get a few package release games. I remember getting probably most of those. Wild Wild Race, and I remember that. And ISS, great, uh, great little footy game there, and Tech and Tag. And there's the discs. So obviously that old familiar blue colour and uh, won't, won't be demoing the game you can find other uh, YouTube videos that demo show this demo running and uh, there you go nice to see that and I just want to show you the magazine more than anything I suppose so there's the front cover there's the back cover it shows you how old it is uh, it's talking about Toy Story being released on DVD 6th of November that would have been obviously 2001 on the cover You've got Hideo Kojima on the making of Metal Gear Solid 2, uh, GT3, Bouncer, some of these games maybe not played for years, Star Wars, Star Fighter, Tomb Raider Next Gen. And I say it was a DVD thing. I mean, a lot of people played and even bought the PlayStation 2 just for the DVD aspect. So you can see I've kept it in reasonable order. Um, I, don't know you, I don't know what your grading is, but... I'd say that's a fairly decent grade. I've not really read it. I have actually got another copy of this, um, which a friend gave to me. And that's, I think, in similar uh, sort of, you know, condition. This, uh, really just haven't read it uh, that much. So I think uh, the, this one was my one. I kept it reasonably good. And then a mate of mine gave me his because he just finished with it. And that one's maybe been thumbed a little bit more. But anyway, it's all about for me, just enjoying looking at looking back, I suppose, going back in time and seeing what we were thinking back then and reading back then from the ads and everything else. So this is from the editor, Mike Goldsmith. 
talking about the future and it very much was that. It was quite an exciting period as well. Uh, the kind of 2001, 2000 period, you know, the millennium. Yeah, it's just great times really for me. I was working in London myself, as I say, in graphic design. I was working on a few gaming related projects as well, which was fun. See that uh, I'm not going to go through every single page. ISS, it's a bit of an up and coming review of that. That was going to be out in 24th of November. Hopefully it hit that date. Uh, Catherine Shannon was the disc editor. Quite an important role to play in terms of picking the right titles that came out with the PS2. And I've got quite a PS2 collection. I might do another one. I found when they uh, released Vice City, a very nice cover on that one. So I might do that as a separate video. If you're interested at all, please put that in the comments below. If you want me to do any more magazine reviews, I've got a ton of magazines from all different eras. So it might be something that I get into a bit more, even just for myself, just remind myself of some of the games that were covered. I covered the uh, disc bit, so I'll flip that. It was a postal bag, probably not too much in there. Don't know how that works with a new magazine. It's quite interesting. Maybe they put a thing out advertising for people. In fact, just reading it now, it's people who worked in the industry. So it's quite interesting, actually. So you've got Sam Hauser from Rockstar writing a thing about why he's very emotional about bringing the PS2 games. And Glenn O'Connell, who is the head of comms at Rage. And you've got Yui Shabata, sorry about pronunciation, who's the managing director of Square. So yeah, people from the industry, it's quite interesting. And obviously then it went into fans, I guess. You've got uh, quite an ad here from Konami, talking about their various games coming out. Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, obviously a massive title. Sons of Memory, Shadow, Sons, Shadows of Memories, great game that at the time. Really thought that was a cinematic movie playing it a fun game to play zone of the enders i think uh, a lot of people pick that up i've got that recently or rebought it i think gran turismo 3 i was playing this just the other day what a fantastic game this was at the time i say if you compare it to some of the games now for driving maybe the graphics obviously are going to be less you know they're, they're going to be more smooth now but at the time, I remember going on one of the tracks, I can't remember the name of it, where you go through the trees and you get that dappled light. That was just amazing. I just remember that now. I did it the other day and it still felt, felt the same for me. It was pretty fantastic. Even though I'm playing probably Forza 7 at the moment as my driving uh, most recent game anyway. So there's a bit of an interview there and covers a lot in the game. Wipeout Fusion. So I still was the original Wipeout. This is the PS2 entry game which uh, goes into some of the detail on the team there let's have a look who we got interesting advert for dynasty warriors 2 and a bit of a preview as well a lot of people pick that game up i'm not going to go through everything it's just flick through things that catch my eye i remember things like this you see uh, quite a lot of these ads so early websites UKplay2.com, I think there was another one, I can't remember the name of it. I used to buy all my games from that. I think you used to have to ring up and pay because you couldn't pay via a credit card and you had no e-commerce, which is just crazy when you think about it. So you had like a website you could browse and then you'd have to ring them up. But that was the you know, that was the time, you know, 20 years ago, it was not all as uh, smooth the internet as it is now. You could do it on your phone. Great Kojima interview, I do remember this one. So, uh, I'm not going to read it out, but I think he was very much with the games and the DVD talking about the cinematic aspect. And obviously, there's a lot of crossover with Hideo Kojima and movies, as we well know. So the PS2 gave him the capability to, to do that at the time. And, uh, you know, the rest is history, I guess. You're talking about Lara Croft and the new game Z coming out there. Just flick through now. What else are we finding? The third place, if you remember advertising, that was very much the style. So it was uh, the David Lynch TV advert, if you remember it. Again, you can find that sort of thing. Look it up here on YouTube. Um, you also had, what else? Let's just have a little flick through. So things catch my interest. Tokyo Game Show. 
I mean, look at the phones that were out back then. This is 20 years ago. This was state of the art, you know. And the PS2 was state of the art, so it aligned itself to that bit of a overview of the game show there. So 20 years ago. Let's just flick through a little bit more. A bit on Star Wars and Lucas Arts at the time, obviously. What else have we got here? Q&A with the development of the PlayStation and how it came about. So really saying there, but I mean, I suppose it's, you know, continuing through the PS and, uh, or PlayStation 1, whatever you want to call it, so many names for it, <laughs> and uh, how the, you know, PS2 came about and all the aspects from the joypad to the ports, the fact that it was internet enabled, big thing, the uh, capability of, Connecting to your TV, digital out. Nice little kind of overview. When you pick up a new console, it's very cool to pick up the new magazine, the kind of issue one. Talks about all the peripherals as well. Things like digital camera aspects. You even had a PlayStation printer. Wow. Don't get me on eBay <laughs> looking at for that. So uh, that was interesting. I never picked that up personally. There we go. It's an average game room there in 2001. Quite clean looking. Interesting to see that. That's now scattered with more retro games, I expect. Um, Tekken Tag. Love Tekken. Huge fan of the series. Definitely picked this up at the time. Time Splitters. What a game that is. Wow. And seeing that for the first time, pretty mind-blowing. Gave it a 9 out of 10. Quite deservedly. Probably should have got a 10, but anyway. Ridge Racer 5, is that? Yeah, so I remember getting the original Ridge Racer and obviously various SSX, beautiful game. Still play that today, really smooth. Just one, it's, Even if you don't like snowboarding, it's a fan, fantastic game to play. Smuggler's Run, that's a pretty good, okay game. Got a little bit bored of it after a while. Ready to Rumble 2, obviously had it on the Dreamcast. I'm not sure I picked it up for the PlayStation 2. Uh, maybe have it somewhere because I picked up a bit of a collection recently. Uh, well, not recently. It wasn't recently, it was a while back. Um, but yeah, it felt like recently. I play it a lot, so that's probably what's on my mind. Orphan, the Scion of Sorcery. Never played that. Interesting. RPG. This is another thing when you... Oh, God, I'd give it a four, so maybe <laughs> maybe not. Um, but, you know, I like trying stuff out, even if it's got low grades. I really, you know, I take notes of the scores, but also make my own mind up with a lot of games, to be honest. Because, you know, it's one person's view. And you take that view and then you make your own up. So Wild Wild Racing, I picked that up pretty much from launch. So these are the games that were kind of coming up at the time. Tomb Raider Chronicles, we do remember playing that. Completed that and uh, it was a decent title. Subs uh, information. Yeah, so they, I remember doing DVD reviews. I definitely used to love getting those. Look at the price of DVDs. Look, Gladiator, twenty four ninety nine. Wow. DVDs were pricey. I remember getting import DVDs paying £30. I mean, import VHSs were crazy as well. But uh, yeah, it had a nice little DVD bit. It had a thing of um, festivals and such like. So that was quite cool. And then you also had books. I've got that book there, Electronic Plastic. It's a great book. I think I might have even seen it in here and then bought it. Uh, moves on Tekken, Player's Guide, very useful. Very, very useful at the time. You know, the internet didn't necessarily have these things. So I used to use some of the tips at the back. And yeah, a bit of a behind the scenes, behind the magazine. And uh, yeah, you cut it mobile phone tone, ringtone graphics, and goodness knows what else. You used to have it at the back. And that's it, guys and girls. Hope you enjoyed that little overview. And this was going back 20 years. I really enjoyed it myself, just a you know, fairly fast run through, but still gave me a bit of a feeling of going back in time. If you like this video, please comment below and uh, please don't uh, have to, but subscribe to games you loved. I'll try and do more videos, uh, product stuff and all sorts if, uh, if that's something you want us to do. So please do like this and smash the like button and uh, subscribe to us if you like what we do and we'll try and do some more in the coming months. See you out there.